Hey everybody, Rob Holman with Northwest Fishing. I'm here, I'm here with Jack Apperson of Northwest Rivers Fishing and Real Time Fishing. Good morning. We're chasing unicorns today. Yep, the elusive, highly mysterious spring salmon, huh? Yes, we are. You've had some success lately? Yes. yes we, uh, yesterday we only got one. The day before we got three, hooked five. So there's some fish around. This is really one of those fisheries that people haven't really figured out. Yeah, and, and the fish push in. Like yesterday was a slow day, so there's not as many people. So today should be a good day. Right. They come in little waves. So. Yeah. You can you can have success out here though, Jack. You just got to fish every day. Yeah. And then you get to fish on the best ones. Right. <laughs> right. Well, wh why are these fish so prized? The these fish are going to be in this river for several months. They quit eating when they enter the river, so they're loaded, loaded with fat. So. When you cook these fish, you don't have to oil them up. It, it all comes preloaded, and that's why they are the best. Yeah, excellent table fare. It's going to be a fun show. Keep watching. So we're going to be fishing herring today, and we're going to run two singles and a treble trailer. And this one single is on a slide, just slides up and down the, the line. And we're looking for a tight roll. That first bait didn't want to be a tight roll. I got it cut on that wire, and that. Uh, And then we're going to let out real slow and easy so we don't get tangled. I always say the first guy to the bottom is the first one to get tangled, so let's take our time to be laughing. Beautiful morning here on the Columbia. We're on the Oregon side. Um, fishing out of Vancouver today for Spring Chinooks. First time out. We're going to have some fun today out here with Jack and we're out here with Rob and Hillary from Northwest Fishing. Of course, I'm Paul. Nice to see you today and let's catch some fish. Alright, reel her down and then... There you go. Perfect. There she is. Perfect. There you go. That's what you're looking for. And then we're just letting it down. Okay, so I, I want you to do like this. I want you to just do pulls. Okay. So pulls and then check it. Pulls. Okay. We're shallow right here. Yeah, you should be there that quick. Okay, hit the bottom. Are we reeling half a reel up? Nope, I want to be tipping. What do you mean by tipping? Is that on the bottom? So when, when your rod tip is going like this, you're dragging. Mm -hmm. And when you're barely making contact, it's a softer tick tick. Or when the boat lifts from a wave, you'll see that lead touch. Yeah. But right now, these fish are in that zone. Ticking away on the bottom, just barely touching the bottom. You want the action on your pole, so it's just ticking. That's where Jack says we want to be. You gotta go ticking if you want to get some of that Columbia River chicken. So we're, we're at getting close to tide change, so you get two opposing tides, so you gotta be careful on the when you're letting out, that's the easiest time to get tangled up. What we do is put some stuff in the way. <laughs> oh yeah, that's going good. Uh, oh, he's coming at me or is he gone? Oh, he's there. Are you getting down there? Wow, this is a nice hot fish. 
real important, Jack was saying, to keep tension on this. Yes. Tight, tight. right here, Jack. He's on that ball. Oh, he's right here. Oh, he's going under. Rod in the water. Rod in the water. Woo -hoo -hoo. Should we step forward for me? Always welcome them aboard with the welcome to the committee. <laughs> welcome aboard. That's a great looking, super bright fish here in Portland. This is what you're looking for in this urban fishery. Jack, what do you think that is? About 10 pounds? 12? Uh, 12, 13. Yep. 12, 13. That's an awesome fish. Nice, beautiful fish. This is what we were looking for. No adipose fin. So, hatchery fish. That's going. Those hooks come out real easy. That's why we have to keep it tight because they do come out easy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and that was a hot fish. It was coming Red at us. Hot. Well, what happened? See, he had that treble hook was in the roof of his mouth and the tongue of his mouth, and they don't like that. So, they go right. He was up. He was up top, but you, a lot of times kings go down, and that thing was right he up top. He didn't like that. Getting there, right? Yeah, that's right. It was awesome. Good yeah. job, buddy. Right on. Woo! Yeah, he kind of put a plug out there for raised baits, and yeah. they're hairy. We've been fishing it for years, and it's sure. we love it. That's what we got here. Raised baits, baby. With, with Potsky. With Potskys, yep. Potsky yep. here. Potsky's blue and a little bit of Potsky's krill. Potsky's super sauce. So. Jack, can you tell us a little bit more about rigging this stuff after the break here? Yeah. We'll show everybody at home how you're catching these fish. We will do that. We'll be right back. Thanks. We're getting going here and, and we want to follow the bottom, okay? The, we want our bait in that bottom 18 inches. So we got a 12 inch dropper and a lead, okay? And we want to see this tick occasionally. Not a solid like like this where it's dredging. We don't necessarily want to be dredging, but we want to be making contact every now and again. And it's just a little tick tick, tick is what tick. we're looking for. And, and when the boat lifts to the side, you should see that touch, like you're seeing there, a little tick tick. And that's that's the game. If you do that, it's a lot of work because the bottom goes up and down. If you're not doing that, you're not fishing. So we're, we're at 37 feet and it goes up and down pretty quick. So we're letting out line, reeling it in. Yep. And we can do that here with uh, the eight ounce balls right on the bottom. Yep. And we're in sand, so you can drag and occasionally we get hung up, but not very often. Yeah, and that's when you can see that little bit of difference in that action with some weeds. It's a, more of a... Yeah, so, so you got weeded up a little bit ago and I said, you're tangled. And what it was is the rod looked like you had a pro roll on, we're running a fish flash. It just spins, so that rod shouldn't be pulsing. So if it gets tangled or gets weeded up, it quits turning and it starts pulsing. And that's what I saw. Yeah, just up. more of a swooping action rather than that tick tick. Exactly. So essentially we're bottom walking with eight ounce lead here. Exactly. <laughs> <in the Columbia. laughs> Anybody that walleye fishes and you're in a bottom walker, basically that's what we're doing. Yeah. But instead of a wire, we're using a mono, dropper to eight ounces of lead. And you've got your, sorry, what is that, the, the wire piece? That so I use a wire pull, instead of a shock leader, I use a wire there. That way when it gets tangled, you only have a lead line to untangle and not another piece of mono or another piece of wire. So the cable will tangle up too. Without wire, it never tangles. So all you have to do is untangle one 
that's really made a difference all day as far as keeping the tangles to a minimum. So try it out. Well, I had a good solid bite. Well, that's what it's about. Didn't get him, but I had a nice solid. You gotta let him bite it. You can't just grab it and set the hook. You gotta let him mouth it and take it for a while. And these barbless hooks we're using, you gotta, you gotta be right on top of the pole to keep the pressure on them. Sometimes even having, even having to take the pole down into the water to pull them ahead. Okay, let's pick it up. Okay. We're gonna pick up now and we're gonna go back up and try it again. Okay? Reset it. To re a little bit. Just a hair. Bouncing it right off the bottom there. Pick him, pick him. Yeah, when the boat lifts, pick it. you take yeah. Jack, do you want to tell us a little bit about the tide and how it's what we're doing here with the speed? Yeah, so right now we are started into the incoming tide, so it's slowing down. When we started this morning, it was running out and we were fishing at about 3.2, 3.4. And now we're slowed down to 2.8. And as it pushes in, it'll push in fish, slows us down, and that's our most optimal time to catch them. We've been getting them on the incoming tide in that first hour and a half of the outgoing is when it's been best the last week. So hopefully things start happening here soon. Hey everyone, we're coming to you from Puget Sound. I'm with my wife Joanne and my son James. We're out uh, fishing for resident coho here in June and I wanted to show you a different technique for getting your bait down to those fish. Now I've got down riggers running right and left but off of the back of the boat I'm running what's called a deep six and this is a diving type of device. You would think that with the point it should go this way to dive in but it's actually this way. So your main line goes to the front here, and then your lure goes to the back. The deep six, because it's a diving device, it digs into the water and it forces everything down. So generally, depending on how fast you're trolling and how much stuff you have behind the deep six is gonna affect how deeply it will go down. Now, I'm running mine out about 60 feet and using a 45 degree angle, it's probably down there around 30 to 35 feet. It's not really essential to know the exact depth when you're using a diving device like a deep six. What is more useful is that you can always bring it back down to that exact same depth by just using um, a reel counter or you know, counting out the number of pulls that you're behind the boat. So that's where this really comes in handy. On this device, on this deep six, there's a little release here. So when that fish hits, it will pop. And now you're playing the fish without the tension of the diver. Some divers don't have that feature. So watch for that. There's a little screw here on the side that will adjust the tension. Um, so you can adjust it based on the kind of fish you're going after. So that goes back in here. Now on this end, the pointed end, your line is gonna go to your bait. In this case, I'm running about 30 inches to a rotator. And I like rotators because they don't put up a lot of, as much resistance as say a flasher would. From my rotator then, I'm going another 36 to 40 inches 
I've got an old goat double tandem spinner with a with a herring uh, cut plug herring. One thing to be aware of: the longer your distance between your deep six and your bait, the farther away that fish is going to be when it's time to net it. So you need to uh, keep that in mind and don't make your leaders too long. One thing I really love about deep sixes is the the bite. When you get a fish, when you get a coho. Um, that rod is going to slam like you've never seen. It's way cool and it's a lot of fun. Um, so this is a great technique, again, if you want to run a third line off the back of your boat and you don't want to stack on the downriggers, this is a really good way to go. And uh, I hope you give it a try this fall when the big coho come in. We'll see you guys on the water. Last pass and uh, a little good luck, please. Let's do it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Keep on. It's a, it's a beauty. Hillary. I'm gonna say that fish is yeah, woo, 22, 23, somewhere in there. Yeah, Hillary's not not a, a, a big person there. That fish is as big as her, so that's <laughs> right there, huh? Hold, yes, hold I'm it a dainty up. lady. Hold it up. <laughs> <laughs> Remember scale. <laughs> so yeah. right here on the Beautiful Columbia fish. River, right outside of Portland, we're right near the uh, the I-5 bridge. Be here hold it. The and then if they extend it, I'll be here longer, but uh, my plans are to move up river to uh, the Drano area and then at my home in Rufus, Oregon in that area after awesome. the six. So you're chasing springers the rest of the season Yep, there. until I go to Alaska in June, I'm springer fishing, baby. And, and you're Northwest <laughs> Rivers fishing. Fishing. And I, and, I, and I also work for Toby Wyatt, real time fishing. Real time. We know Toby pretty good there. You're awesome, Toby. Mwah, mwah. That's a great fish, Hillary. All right, you, we Jack. got back. And real. Uh, do you think we need to make one more pass? I we got one more tag, huh? Yeah, we better do it. Let's do it. Can't, can't win if you don't play. <laughs> no, that's right. We're gonna get back after one more, folks. Hey, Jack, that was a heck of a day out there, man. It was great. Appreciate it very much. Blue fingers and the whole works. Yeah, we'll we'll get to the blue fingers. We put a lot of hours in today. Yep. For a few bites, luckily we've got to peg a couple of them. Yep. Way worth the payoff, these bright salmon. Yes, sir. They're the, the finest that ever come up this river are these spring chinook. The prize. 
I think a lot of guys work days and days and days without a bite. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, it's, a, it's a fishery that if you don't keep your, your gear on the bottom and you don't present it right, they're not going to bite it. And if you don't have the proper bait, they're not going to bite it. We're, you're going to show everybody at home how you cut the herring, right? Perfect. So, right here is herring that we, uh, we've dyed with Potskis. Okay. And uh, Any particular Potski? I like the Potskis fire dye. Liquid. Okay. And uh, this is the trick right here, folks. A little pull there. A little slice there, get them guts out. That's it. And then uh, to rig them, we're just taking, we got a little hook there on a slider. And then a pull hook goes in here. Folks, that's it. That's the gist of it. That's all we're doing right there. That's pretty straightforward. You had an inline flasher going. Yep. Um, and then just keeping the lead on the bottom. Yep. That's it. The and short bus there. This, uh, this is set up when the fish grabs it. This one can actually go with it. You usually end up, boom, that comes back. And you usually end up with all those hooks in their mouth. And then this hook not being tied there is not working against this hook. Sure. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. That's, That's a little it. trick there. That's the gist. Yeah. Awesome. If guys want to go fishing with you, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, call my wife. <laughs> <laughs> call call Dodie. Right, right. At 541-480-3668. Uh, or that, call Toby Wyatt yeah. at real time. So we got Northwest Fishing. Northwest Rivers Fishing. Northwest Rivers Fishing and real time fishing. Either way, yep. they can get a hold of you. Yep. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. For uh, Northwest Fishing, I'm Rob Holman. We'll see you next time. This is really what you're talking about. Look at the richness of that meat. Yeah, look at that. No color added, folks. <laughs> look how thick that belly is. Yeah, wow. Fall fish, you know, that's all thin. And... Right. So these guys are, are going to live off of that reserve there. Yep, exactly.